Well, good morning to you, sir. How Thank are you doing? You. How are you doing right now? Because look, yeah. I mean, obviously, like uh, the not the most ideal ending. I would argue, quite literally, the second most ideal ending, <laughs> though. What's what was it like watching it all back? Because I know you all gathered uh, in person as well to watch it all happen. Oh my gosh, yeah. So we had the most incredible viewing experience. We went to the Culver Theater in LA. This they had this massive, massive screen. You know, everyone is so tuned in. Like producers were there. The rest of the cast is there. It was amazing. It was like the best way to watch the finale, I think. And and it it was it was a good time. I mean, we've had like seven months to to process everything. And and you know, because of that, I was able to just go in and, and completely enjoy it. And uh, you know, to have such a nice bow to the end of the uh to the end of the season, like I I'm nothing but but thankful and grateful for the experience and and it was an epic episode. So no complaints here. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about that epic ending as oh. well. Five to three, you are the runner up that's come the closest to winning since Dom back in nearly 10 uh, seasons ago. So I'm super curious, what was your reaction to the final outcome? Besides, obviously, the disappointment of losing. Were yeah. you surprised that any jury votes went one way or the other after that final tribal council? You know, going into final tribal, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle for me. Like, I can tell mm. just whenever we went to final tribal, just like looking at the jurors, I didn't really have a lot of friends out there. You know, I came in with my immunity necklace. Only person smiling at me is Drew. You know, you see D come in. Everyone's looking like, oh, like, yeah, let's go, D. So, like, I knew it was an uphill battle. But at the same time, I really felt that if I had an opportunity to tell my story, to explain the moves that I did, which, you know, I feel like I had a lot of these under-the-radar moves and a lot of these moves that happened in the middle of the game where people are kind of, like, less tuned into exactly what's happening, I felt I could beat anybody. So um, I was able to flip a couple votes, I think, and, and Kendra – I was a little surprised, but like, you know, I knew she was, and she told me after she was, she went to final tribal, planning to vote on D. So being able to flip that, that was really awesome. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So talking about that final tribal, I mean, you talk about on the one hand, impressing by talking about some of these moves that you made that maybe people were not suspecting of. On the other hand, we, and then also saw, you know, D deliver a couple of punches to you. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me about your reaction in that moment, especially to obviously the bomb being dropped of, oh, after all that, she did tell Julie to play the idol. Yeah. yeah. You know, when, when bombs get dropped at final travel, you just got to roll with it. Like, you know, obviously that was a blind side, but I had to be like, oh yeah, whatever. Not a big deal. And try rolling with it for the rest of tribal council. Um, basically she said that, and you know, there was a part of me who thought like, okay, yeah, there, there is a chance that D told Julie, but I kind of like during the game convinced myself being like, no, 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 that, that can't have happened, you know, for multiple reasons. But I think the, the big one was the fact that like, I knew that me telling D was a big risk. And if D ended up telling Julie, then I kind of get the blame. Like it's my fault that Julie knew. And so I was like, okay, it's way better for my game. If it wasn't D that told Julie. So I kind of convinced myself, no, 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 no. We're going to go with the story that you didn't tell anybody. So when she told me that, like, oh, no, 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 I swear my parents, I didn't tell Julie. I was like, okay, fine. Like, like I, I believe you. And like, even if I didn't believe you, I want people to think that too. So um, yeah, no, it was, it was a gut punch. It was a fantastic move. And I knew after that, it was like, and then, you know, that actually happened earlier on in Tribal. Um, oh. So a lot of so yeah that that happened pretty early on and at that point it's like okay i need to go into overdrive to sort of like make up for that and a lot of my my big arguments that i was making actually happened afterwards um so i kind of felt like the the wind was sucked out early on but i kind of was clawing my way out through the rest of the the final tribal super interesting i mean talking about the finale in general you come back to this new camp with it maybe in one uh, scenario, a new situation for you, indeed, considering that, like, she leaves you out of the loop. This is the first vote of which you are just, like, really not in on, and you lose Drew in the process. And I think a lot of us were coming in wondering, like, how is he going to react to this? How much did you weigh your own options? Were you really just loyal to the soil? Drew's gone. It's me and D for the rest of the game. Or were you considering other options there? Yeah, no, I, I mean... A little bit of both. I think I was definitely considering a lot of options at that point. But, you know, when when you get blindsided, the worst thing you can do is go back and get pissed off at everyone and think that, you know, you're not willing to work with other people, then they'll vote you out. I knew I was going to be in an interesting position where I could potentially be in the middle between Julian D and Jake and Katura. So I wanted to make sure that, like, I didn't burn the bridges with Julian with D. So I went back to both of them and was like, listen, like, I understand as a game move. 
I'm back with the Reba four, Reba three, let's go. Um, and I did have a lot of like genuine honesty when I was saying that, like, I didn't think that I was going to, I like, I was planning on voting Katura at final five up until like five minutes before we left for final tribal. And at that point I was like, like, I, I, I knew I was playing too much with my heart. I wanted to keep Julie there because in the previous two votes, I kind of could like mentally blame Drew and Emily for like my voting of Julie. So it hurt less for me writing down her name because we got really, really close. Like I love Mama J. But so at final five, it was like, this is my decision voting for her, which made it even tougher. But I knew like, you know, five minutes before we left for tribal, I was like, this, this is what I have to do. Like, I have to vote for Julie now. Like it's way better for my game right now. So that's ended up what, what, what happened. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of these relationships. Uh, and I want to start with the unknown, perhaps instead of the known, because I think that's one reason, again, why the final jury vote was so close. Now, it seemed from our perspective, we obviously knew a lot about your in Reba relationships. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, this is Survivor. You had to be forming relationships outside of Reba. What were you, what would you say were some of your closest and or most important relationships that you built outside of that core four? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest, most obvious one is with Emily early on. Um, you know, we pretty quickly, me, Drew and Emily came up with the final three. And that was definitely a path that I was really considering. Um, and we had a really good bond and we would talk all the time and, and had a really good, you know, personal strategic partnership together. I think another one, you know, Kendra voted for me, which I think to a lot of people was kind of a shock, but we had a, a really good relationship too. You know, we had this like deep dish alien alliance that we made in New Bello. We were going to work together towards the end. Um, obviously that, you know, didn't end up being what happened, but we had a really great relationship. I love Kendra and um, yeah, they didn't show that. I also had a good relationship with Jake. I felt like once Bruce was gone, um, I had a final three with everybody left in the game essentially. And um, you know, I was, I feel like I was talking strategy with everybody in the game and, you know, had a decent relationship with, with pretty much everyone too. Um, but yeah, no, no, they, they mainly focus on, on the inner Reba, uh, um, dynamics, but. Well, yeah. let's start, uh, peeling back the layers of those onions. I want to start with Drew here. Talk to me about this dynamic. I mean, was it as surface level as the Steven and JT brain versus Braun, because listen, you've got quite a brain on yourself. You. And I'm and I'm also intrigued, had that final six vote gone the way you wanted, you talk about having options. Did you yeah. want to go to the end with Drew? You know, for me, you know, and I said it in the, the finale, I had two number ones, Drew and D. And at the end of the day, I was treating them both at the same level. I was going to play my idol with Drew and I was going to bring him to the end, even if it wasn't best for my game, because we had this final two alliance like really early on. And like, we had such a close bond. He was like really my best friend out there. And 100%, I would have played my idol on him if I'd known. And, you know, if Julie or D came up to me at final seven being like, hey, let's vote out Emily, just like how I told D, I was going to tell Drew the exact same thing. Um, like, that's how close our relationship was. I was going to go to the end with him. That was the plan. We wanted to JT Steven it. I mean, it didn't end up happening that way. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was it was a really, really close bond and connection. We're like still best buddies. And um, yeah. Well, then we got to get to the D in the room. <laughs> so let's start with sort of the origin point of this because we didn't see things really blossom until like around day 20 or so was that realistic to what happened on the island as well because Kendra talks about like you speaking about her when the tribe swap happens can you pinpoint like when these the winds started to change yeah. in a manner of speaking <laughs> yeah no um there were a few moments I think one moment and D kind of talked about this I think in the after show is like when we got separated um at the tribe swap there was definitely a shift in energy. And like, I did miss her and being around her because she was, you know, she was really, really good to be around, really funny. You know, we would laugh together, have really good conversations. So like being apart from her for those like days at, at New Bello kind of sucked. And those, it didn't help that those were the toughest days out there. Like physically we were starving and, you know, we had to go to our first tribal council. So they were tough. We, you know, got rained out an entire night. So that kind of like, I guess like started like, oh, I kind of miss this person, but I didn't really think about it. I was like, okay, you know, I miss them. Like, I miss Julie too. I miss everybody. Um, I think a big moment, I think day 20 really is true to what happened because on day 20, that night, it rained like the entire night. And, you know, D and I were next to each other on the, the bamboo. And like, we kind of like it started raining, got really cold. We're like kind of huddled up next to each other, you know, locked arms and stuff. And we're like, okay, like 
This is kind of nice. Um, and then we did that the next day because it rained for like four hours. And then the next night, perfectly sunny. Nothing was wrong, like clear skies. And we were like, okay, well, like that, that, that was like kind of nice. So why don't we just do that again? Um, so that's kind of like, I think what really kicked it in. But um, I guess there were parts throughout the game. You kind of see it too, if you like rewatch it. And like, I knew what was going to happen. So like, I was kind of attuned to this in the, you know, throughout the season, there are moments where like, you can, you can definitely see that there, there's some feelings there. Yeah. I mean, listen, you made the Robin Amber comparison to me in the preseason. You made it on the show, but you watched all stars, you know, how yeah. visible that pair became and how it threw a target onto them. And we see that at the final five with you and D as well. I mean, how much were you balancing that realistic possibility with, as you've talked about, just like the fact that you can't help catching feelings? Yeah, no. And, and that was a big reason, I think, also why it came out so late is because both D and I were so focused on our game and showman that's just instant disaster if that comes out you're done like they're coming for you so we i think that really made it push so far back and by day 20 i think we were in such good positions at that point in the game we felt really comfortable like okay like what are people going to do at this point but at the same time you know even then like most of the times like during the day we never really talked or hung out too much you know we didn't want to spend too much time alone so most of our times hanging out was like at night when people were asleep and we'd go have like you know, hour, two hour long conversations together, talking about strategy and life and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so we did our best to keep it under wraps. And it's kind of funny because like, you know, you see in the after shows like, oh, who knew that this was happening? Like everyone raised their hands like, come on, come on, really? Like then, then we would have been voted out way long ago. But um, no, I think we did a really good job of, of hiding it. Um, and that's why it works really is just because we put our games first before, you know, the showmance or anything. Um, and you can, you can see that like she voted out my number one, I voted out her number one. Um, but yeah, like you said, like you can't really stop feelings and you just kind of have to play around them. Now you talk about hiding it, obviously from a public eye perspective, this thing has certainly been hidden. So now that the veil has been lifted a bit, let, I'm remiss uh, if I didn't ask this. Yeah. How have things been the past seven months? What's the decent status uh, going on, you know, nearly a year at this point? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but um, things are going great. I mean, obviously, we've seen each other so many times since the end of the, the season. We've hung out. We've gone to all these different watch events. And, you know, I visited in Miami. She came to Chicago. But um, for the most part, like, I think we, we kind of want to keep this side private for now. I mean, things are going really, really crazy. Um, and uh, I don't think I, I, we're quite ready yet to deal with, like, the ramifications of, of announcing anything. So we're, we're going to keep that private. Yeah, I, I read between the wings. It's just a soft launch for you two to be on The Amazing Race next season. I get it. <laughs> hey, I mean... <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I want to ask, you hold the commendation of being the only person this season to not get a vote against you. Mm -hmm. What do you most credit to that? Either a part of your game, a relationship yeah. you made, et cetera. Yeah, I think, I think I did a really good job of making people feel that keeping me in the game would be better for their game. Um, and pretty much my one of my biggest strategies going into the game and like focus point of my strategy was threat management. I knew just being a bigger athletic guy, I would immediately have eyes targeting me. So the moves that I made had to kind of be under the radar. I had to sort of have relations with everybody and like make them think that they needed me in their game, which is why, you know, I kind of went up to everyone and, and made sure they're like, listen, we have a final three path to, with each other to the end. And this is why I want it to be you. And I think I was able to convince a lot of people that they were in my long-term plan. And because of that, um, if any word came out of my name coming, and I, I think that only really happened once with Julie, people immediately shut it down. Well, listen, you talk about that journey of being an alternate of just the whirlwind 72 hours you had, getting to see you just kind of like cut loose, play as aggressively as you could, and still not get any vote against you just goes to show like I think the subtly strong game that you played and not just from a physical perspective so listen it, it was a wild game you played man in so many different ways and the fact that you nearly walked away with a million dollars from it obviously stings a bit but hopefully there's a bit of sweetness to that and not even just from a deep perspective so thanks for not only talking with me again today but everything you brought to this season man it was a great time oh man thank you so much i got chills hearing that from you like it means the world and and like you said like i was the alternate i came in playing on house money so like any day out there was a blessing and, and i think because that i kind of have a different viewpoint and perspective of like yeah sucks i didn't win but like I really wasn't supposed to play at all. So just getting to the end, doing all these things, finding an idol, winning challenges, you know, going fishing, like 
it was a dream come true. I am so, so thankful that I was able to sneak onto the cast. And then, yeah, it, it's nothing but good vibes.